I really like those baked ruffles. Cheddar and cheddar and cream, sour cream. Well, you, you know what I really like? I really like when someone is willing to pay for Open House to exist. I like that. And, Not again. Uh, and this week it happens to be Mac Weldon. So uh, thanks, Mac Weldon, for your sponsorship. We're going to hear more from you guys at the end of the show. I have a special <clears throat> fun story to share about Mac Weldon, too, that Elise knows about. That's going to oh, be please real don't. great, real please great don't. piece of content. Did you shit us. in them? <laughs> Just a little? No spoilers. <laughs> First question this week comes from Hose Fino. Funhouse has been asked to come up with a new Old Spice deodorant. What does everyone call their own custom scent, and how do they advertise it? Uh, mine's Old Man Poop. Uh -huh. And uh, I know it sounds bad right now. Yeah. Sounds kind of bad right I now. I know it sounds bad right now. It's a little bad. But the more that you smell it, uh, the more you get used to it, and the more you realize it's actually a healthy smell. Uh, it's not an unhealthy smell like we think it is. Oh. Uh, so old man poop. Have you tried this new deodorant yet? <laughs> I would combine, uh, uh, Jurassic World Furor, which is at a fever pitch right about now. I would agree. Uh, and people's love of cool masculine sounding scents. So mine would be Freshosaurus Rex. Oh, that's good. That's actually pretty that's really good. good. That's, that's a good rap name. Yeah. That could yeah. be a well, real could thing, be as well. Lawrence. Uh, the, the rapper DJ Freshosaurus would be spinning decks on top of a cybernetic Tyrannosaurus that is going around eating all of the fat poor smelling guys, and while you're up there like a golden god, just swimming in fresh smelling puss. Mm. Mine would be called Tropical Disaster, and it would have tinges of coconut and and palm trees and, and fresh ocean air, but it also smell like when the waves come up and then cover an entire Indonesian village. Oh, yeah. And then every, all, all the sewers kind of rise out. How would you advertise that? Probably with the bodies. Uh, mine would be called Salmon of the Sky. It smells like fish. You mm. want to smell like a fisherman. Mm -hmm. And advertising will be done. You know how everyone has that singing fish? Everyone yeah, does. Yeah, everyone has it. I, I agree. Yes. I have that at home. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone has that it singing fish. Issued by the government. <laughs> came in the mail. Well, so we're going to push out a Wi-Fi update. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to sing the song about Salmon of the Sky, Old Spice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I like that. Adam I'm going to miss Hound Dog. My, this, this right eye is tearing up, and I can't <laughs> stop oh, geez. it. Mine would be called Old Space. And it would be how you smell you smell in in space because nobody stinks in space. That's right. Right. We don't know what space smells smell like. Smell doesn't exist in space. Exactly. All right. Next question from Lime Time War Crime. You all have to hide a treasure somewhere in the world. Where would you hide it, and what would the treasure map look like? I'd hide my virginity, and the treasure map would look a lot like pubes shaped in an arrow pointing down. Ew. Oh, gross. You just I guess you, the treasure map would be your stomach though. packed up in there. That's one treasure nobody's going to hunt for. Oh, <laughs> kidding. boom. I Good luck kidding. finding it. I I would hide the ra the world's greatest treasure, knowledge, in my own mind. But to get to it, they have to proceed down a hallway of horrors known as the cell starring Jennifer Lopez. Mm. So, you just have to watch it. Yeah, pretty much. You just watch it, credits roll, and then you understand life and the meaning of everything. And then you crack a crowbar over your skull and knock you down and start taking your brains. <laughs> um, I would hide my treasure in Mariana's Trench, the lowest point at the bottom of the ocean, and the treasure map would just be a carving in James Cameron's stomach. Oh! So you have to, you have to get to Cameron. Yeah, and, and then he, take, he takes he, you? Yeah. He's, oh, makes, wow. That makes, makes sense. sense. Yeah. I would uh, hide it in Transylvania because I don't know where that is. <laughs> nice! Wow. And even you wouldn't be able to find your own treasure. Hey, so, wait, hold on. Is it in Romania? Yes. Well, shit, I changed my answer. So a lot of people think, right, you know, you got to hide in plain sight. Yeah. Well, have you ever, guys ever dug up treasure before on a, on a desert island? And you open up the chest, and there's a bunch of gold coins, right? All right. You know what you do? You hide the treasure underneath it. So they find the gold. They find the gold. Oh. They get distracted. They're gone. My treasure's right underneath there. Your virginity was right there all along. And the best part about it is that any other treasure map would have an X that marks the That's spot. That's true, no one's gonna find because it. Because no one, ha every treasure map is actually accurate. I had treasure underneath treasure. Another trick oh. is you just make the X really big. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. like, if, no, it's underneath. No, you're not reading the directions right, it's underneath. Uh, map peak? I would hide <laughs> my treasure in my beard. And then I would have, the map would be very detailed, but there'd be an arrow pointing to the X that says the X moves. Like the map from Harry the Potter. The Potter's map? No, yeah, map kinda. Noonans, what roles would you all play in a cheesy TV sitcom? I'd be the forever alone brainy guy. But we always uh, come to you for tech problems. Yeah. But he'd never get laid. Never, never once, no. I'm the black housekeeper, mm. probably. Oh, sassy. Yeah. What's something you'd say when you caught L Lawrence wasn't cleaning up his keyboard? What would you say to him? Hey, you've got to keep this keyboard clean. Shut up, bitch! It comes out, oh. I would be the uh, disappointed dad. 
Um, because, you know, there's always like the kind of the funny, you know, caring mom. And then there's the the, the, little, the fun kids that run around and do lots of, like, get into hijinks and stuff like that. And the disappointed dad comes in and he goes, oh, son, what did you do again? And then he beats the shit out of him with a belt. Yeah, yeah. Over oh, and over yeah, and over. Everybody good. laughs. Ha, 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 keep doing, ha, 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 ha. It's like 20 minutes of laughing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Tell him to stop making a cuck of you. You made a cuck of me! Hitting the belt with a belt. Over nice. Over. Uh, I'd be the other man. So, you know, you have uh, Danny and then his... His wife, Jesse, I'd be the one Jesse sleeps with. Uh, Matt Peak? I don't know what you call the role. The guy that lives in the van or just was the couch potato. <laughs> or... <laughs> the stoner. Yeah, yeah. He's the stoner. He's yeah, absolutely the stoner. He always has a football under his arm, but you've never actually seen him play. He never plays football. It's kind of, everyone's yeah. kind of okay with you just living in the yard. Yeah, he's like 30, but in high school. Yeah. <laughs> That's our Matt Peak. For some reason, the father is totally okay with him just hanging out in the driveway, banging his daughters. Mm. Yeah, you'd be like, hey, it's cool, Matt. You can hang out out there. You gotta be on your test! Uh, Lawrence? <laughs> Robinson, uh, 97, writes, Robinson. who's- Robinson. Beep, beep, Robinson. Bo Robin Robinson. Robinson, 97, writes, who is the most famous person you guys have ever met? I once, uh, met the devil. What? The devil. Whoa. Yeah, from hell. Was it Al Pacino? It was Al Pacino, <laughs> but it was while he was filming The Devil's Advocate. And so, you know, he was, he was mostly yelling at me. <clears throat> And then, uh, and then he made me bang some chick, I think is what happened in that movie. I, I met the devil. It was Elizabeth Hurley. And oh, uh, she was at a Dunkin' Donuts. The better places. devil. Wow. Yeah. yeah, Brendan Fraser was walking around and he wasn't having a good was day. Was it gay Brendan Fraser or? <laughs> uh, basketball Brendan Fraser. Basketball. But he had a small penis. Uh-oh. <laughs> you take me back. <laughs> I once met the devil, although she looked like the devil in real life because she was angry. Her name Kid Jansen. Uh, oh. Jean Grey. I was taking pictures for my passport, mm -hmm. and I was taking forever. And I felt really bad. And Famke Jensen was obviously in a hurry, and I heard her cursing under her breath at me. Ooh, Ooh she was like, she liked fuck, you. Took it so long. Yeah. What the fuck. She cut you in her legs. And I was like, hey, calm. Yeah, I was like, calm down. On a top, we're good. Yeah. Police. Didn't interact with them, but very close to Justin Bieber once. Mm. Uh, and I remember thinking that is like the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Uh huh. What about Matt Peake? I bet Matt Peake's met some famous. Yeah, all right, let's hear this, Matt Peake. Uh, not really. I mean, pro probably Seth Green. Seth Green's pretty famous. I used to, I used to work on Robot Chicken. That's yeah. all. Met him there. Were you Did guys he come in and say, "Hello, no. Matt Peak. My name's Seth Green. You may have seen me in Can't Hardly Wait and Idle Hands." That's it. Is that how he introduces himself? No, he just says, "I'm Seth." He's a very nice guy. Why are you defending him, <laughs> Elise? From Dill Donut, what product would you sell if you were a door-to-door -door salesman? Doors. Oh. Geez. Look at this shitty-ass fucking door. You want it? You want your mind blown? Come out to my door van. And then I'd have like a series of doors set up in the back of the van that they can walk through. Then they all slam shut. See, good door. You can't get out. Now. Oh, and I would. So what I would do is I would build off of Lawrence's door racket. Uh -huh. I would sell door stops. So they'd be preparing to close the door in Lawrence's face, and I'd swipe in there with my door stop. And they go, Oh, excuse me, there. Wait on a second. Have you ever thought about a door stop? We would get the the market. We corner it together. And going. I would sell like and not heavy closing. duty locks. Mm -hmm. I'd go. This wouldn't have happened if you had one of my heavy duty locks. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. And Adam, condoms, but cash only. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> you already do that. <laughs> Damn it! I was gonna say I would sell door to door, door and door stop and door lock salesmen's. Ooh. Oh, so oh that's I would a good sell business. the salesmen's that yeah. sell the doors oh. and the door Listen locks. Listen here, son. The door to door, door lock, door to door stop salesman industry is booming. You want to get in on this right now? Matt Peak, last question. Holly Jolly twenty three asks. What's your favorite Girl Scout cookie? Samoa's because I appreciate the culture and the taste. Thin Mints because you can't go wrong with chocolate and mint, ever. I'm with the Samoa's, but I heard they got a new s'more coming out. Ooh. <gasps> Samoras? What? I don't know. What would that even be? <laughs> I never, I'm a real pill today. I haven't had many Girl Scout cookies. Just say, just say peanut butter ones. Just say the peanut butter. I like peanut butter. Peanut butter. Matt Pink? I can't remember, like truffles? Is that one of them? Yeah. You just make sure, that up? Not? No, I, th I might have. I can't remember. Cookies and cream. Most of the Girl Scout cookies are named after some sort of horrific stereotype. Redskin truffles. Yeah, the redskin truffles. <laughs> no chocolate dagos. Speaking of chocolate, uh, this episode of Open House is brought to you by Mac Weldon Underwear. Yay. And more. Um, Mac Weldon is better than whatever you're wearing right now. Uh, everyone here owns some Mac Weldons, except for maybe Elise, because I don't know that they sell women's underwear. I don't think they do. I bought the Mac Weldon sweat shorts. They're like basically sweatpants, but they cut them off at the knee. What? I wore it for about, what, 48 hours straight? He really needs to clean those shorts. <laughs> it was amazing, and I don't need to. That's the beauty of Mack Weldon. Um, I wore those shirts. Those are awesome shorts, and you can go out with them and people don't look at you because they're not technically sweats, but then you can also wear them like sweats in the house. 
It's great. <laughs> um, Mac Weldon believes in smart design, premium fabrics, and simple shopping. And we just went in, we just click around. They send you a bunch of stuff. Sometimes you get a little care package and it comes with something so that way when you travel, you can put your dirty undies in there. All kinds of stuff. Mac Weldon will be the most comfortable underwear, socks, shirts, undershirts, hoodies, and sweatpants that you will ever wear. They even have a silver underwear, a uh, silver line of underwear and shirts that are naturally antimicrobial. Mm. Uh, it means they eliminate odor. In my case, it worked out quite nicely. And I'm not even sure that I had the antimicrobial ones. Uh, they want you to be comfortable, so if you don't like your first pair, you can keep it. They will still refund you, no questions asked. Uh, we'd love for you to support our sponsors. Go to MacWeldon.com and get 20% off using promo code OPENHOUSE. Buy those shirts and those sweatshorts. That way you never have to wash your clothes. You can go out all the time. You can do anything. Yeah, you can do anything. Perfect, perfect temperature. Right, Elise? He always smells great. I have to say the Mac Weldon underwear is, is pretty cute. She's jealous. Mm. I mean, no, it's cute on you. Ladies underwear coming next. <laughs> I want antimicrobial brassiers. Tired of smelly tits. One time late at night, I wandered into the wrong chat room and somebody sent me a link to the world's greatest meme that only I saw. And then I was cursed with a terrible responsibility to carry around the rarest meme in my head at all times. That's your superpower? Yes, to always know the funniest thing and never be able to say it or describe